Hi, this is a breakdown of a Handel D major sonata first movement. So the biggest problem with this piece, the biggest challenge, is decoding those rhythms. It's written in a really difficult to understand way and it would really be a great idea to kind of rewrite it as if every quaver was a crotchet but we're not going to do that we're just going to think about that idea that in this piece really if you want to understand the rhythms you need to remove one uh, of the beams on the music or double the length of each note so if you look at the beginning it's much easier to think about one two three four one two. <laughs> And this is all quite simple. But if you get to there, then you think about these as purples rather than whatever you would call that in blue jello. Okay, so uh, up to there, if you take out in your mind one of the beams, then it's quite, relatively speaking, simple and it's just about rhythm maths really to work out what is going on. So let's try from the beginning and play up until the first note of bar four, okay? So, seven, eight, one. <laughs> When we get to bar four, that is the same rhythms as we've had in bar the end of bar two, so that's not so difficult. But bar five suddenly has all of these uh, appoggiatoras, um, grace notes. So what you need to look at is how the editor has decoded it above to see what the rhythm is supposed to be. So bar five. like that. So if you're thinking of those quaver beats, one, two, three, and so let's try that together straight on the C sharp, ready, and very good. And for my fingering, I prefer to come down into first position, but you can stay in second if you prefer. Okay, so if we go from the second note of bar four, so the downbeat would be one, two, and three. Keep going. Like Huckleberry. that they have decoded the rhythm for you when it comes first time like in bar five but then you have the same rhythm happening again in bar six and they haven't decoded it for you so you just need to look back or remember so this here the beginning of bar six is the same as in bar five and then here you have the same thing And for me personally, I take the D appoggiatura, that's the one without the line through it, so it's in time, it's not as quick as you can, that's in a chakatura. Uh, from bar, in bar six, I take the last grace note to be an upper note trill rather than an actual half the note. But I think it comes down to interpretation a little bit by the time you get to this stage. So let's play from the second note to bar four and see if you can get that rhythm with me. One, two, three.
let's stop there for a moment. Very good. So then a bar seven is just rhythm maths to work out. Think about taking off a beam. Imagine that. That will help you to work out your rhythms. And then the last beat of bar seven is like um, a dotted qu quaver and then two demi semi quavers. That's what that's how you divide the semi quaver appoggiatura and the semi quaver that's written is you take the half and half and you spread them equally. So that rhythm is the same as somewhere else which I've now forgotten. Um, I can't find it. I'm sure you can find it. Okay, so um, basically seven, eight and and then this is relatively simple again. And make sure you do a full crotchet on the end of that phrase because that is the equivalent of a minim if you're doubling each note. Okay, so we've done half the piece and we're going to see if we can play up to there without any problems. So really turn the volume on my video up high so you can hear exactly what I'm doing. Watch me whenever you can away from the music and see if you can get all of those dotted rhythms and strange appoggiatoras um, correct. So three and four and Well done. So if you can decode the first half like that, you can probably decode the second half, but I will go through it with you in the next video. So uh, see you there.